Happy New Year, and welcome to the first Larry's Furries of 2021. So, very often I do the, I prepare these videos based on things like uh, holidays, current events, but there's really no animal associated with New Year's, at least not the American New Year, you know, the American New Year, when we get to Chinese New Year, I'll probably feature that, but, you know, there's standard Gregorian calendar year, there's no animal associated with that. Uh, the other notable current event, we have, we've had the, uh, some uh, rioting in Washington about, you know, uh, over, over the Electoral College vote to, uh, conf to confirm Joe Biden as our elected president. So, I don't want to d discuss that in, in Larry's Furries either. I'm not going to compare the, the rioters to, a, to rats, to cockroaches, or even to pond scum, because frankly, all those comparisons are disrespectful to wildlife. So, it's, so instead, we, ha we have an animal that, w that was uh, brought, brought to my attention by a discussion in the, se in the Seven C side section, so thank you. Thank you to the students there for, for suggesting an animal of interest. And let's meet it. All right, Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Cordata. We're dealing with animals. We're doing, dealing with vertebrates, all, all very usual by now. Likewise, Plasmamalia is probably the, the group we're going to feature most often in this show because this is Larry's Furries. And that means mammals. Order Foliodota here is a new one, and in fact, very obscure because it, the Foliodota consists of family manatee, which, which are the pangolins, plus some extinct cousins. So really today, just the manatee, the pangolins. And there are eight species of pangolins, and today we're focusing more specifically on Manus pentadactyla, the Chinese pangolin. So let's meet him. Chinese pangolin. 16 to 23 inches long. That's not counting the tail, which is another foot or so. Weight, weight anywhere from 4.5 to 15.5 pounds. So quite a bit of variation possible there. The Chinese pangolin, in fact, all the pangolin species pretty much are nocturnal. And they're pretty much all insectivores. So they eat insects, and in the case of the Chinese pangolin, they almost exclusively eat ants and termites. Some of, some of the other pangolins have a bit more variety in their diet than not these guys. So, pangolin behaviors, as far as, far as where, they, where they live especially, so a lot of the pangolin species are arboreal, they live in trees, and others they, bur they burrow underground. It, the Chinese pangolin is interesting because it's clearly evolved for, for tree climbing. So it's got, you know, you see the prehensile tail from the photo. You know, it's a picture of it hanging on a tail. That's exclusively a tree climbing behavior. It's not, it, it's not really useful to have, to have a prehensile tail, a tail that you can use to grab things unless you're in a tree and need to grab branches. And also, you also see in the photo here the uh, the kind of the uh, long sharp claws, which are also an adaptation for climbing. But the Chinese pangolin is not a tree climber; it's actually a burrowing pangolin. So, so most likely, uh, it, you know, this happened. You know, the Chinese pangolin evolved from one of it, one of its tree climbing neighbors, like say the Indian pangolin, and then. But, but chose to special to uh, refocus into into burrowing in order to take advantage of a food source, you know, ants and termites, which are all in, you know, insects that ha that burrow underground in big colonies. And so, it's a, if you can dig into a to an ant or termite nest, and, you know, that that's a very rich food source to exploit. And so, the Chinese pangolin. Go that niche by evolving back from a tree climber into a burrower. Yeah, so, have, have a tat. See, so, southern China is 
is a geographical territory and it's into the neighboring countries. And notably, pangolins are very versatile as far as what, the habitats they can live in. They live in, well, in forests of all types. So deciduous forests, bamboo forests, uh, you know, car conifer forests. They, 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 you see, you'd see from the range map, they, they live both in you know, flat, flat coastal terrain and even up into the mountains of, of Nepal, the Himalayas. So they have a very wide variety of areas they can live. You know, in addition to forests, they can, they can live perfectly well in grasslands or even in cultivated farmers' fields because they're, bur they're burrowers, they don't need trees, and they, they, they chosen prey is insects, which you, fi which you find anywhere. So, given those conditions, you would expect them to be doing pretty well. They can ad they're well adapted to a coexisting with the, hu with the humans and ch ships and ecosystems, but they're still critically endangered and very, much, very likely to go extinct. And unfortunately, the reason why is hum direct human interaction, poaching. So, like with the uh, rhinoceros and tigers, uh, pa you know, pangolins uh, are particularly hunted for the, you know, for the for the Asian market. Uh, the the, uh, the scales that we, you know, so we saw clearly uh, co covering the pangolin's body in the in the photos, are are valued in traditional Chinese medicine, and uh, there's also demand demand for the, for pangolin meat as a as a luxury product and so between those drives uh, there's a, a lot of uh, hunting of of uh, really really all eight pangolin species mostly illegally and, and so several several species of pangolin are in severe danger of becoming extinct from the hunting unfortunately this is one of them also, with Chinese pangolin, conservation efforts are a lot more difficult than others. So the birth rate is slow, and in, fa in fact, we, there's not a, a, a consensus as to how as to how slow the, the birth rate is. Uh, there's so there's considerable data in the literature as to, as to for instance, what the pregnancy time on a pangolin is. Uh, there's yeah, you know, some some sources say that a pangolin has a fairly typical gestation period, hundred to hundred sixty days, whereas others suggest that the Chinese pangolin in particular might might take on like a full year to be in just in, just in its pregnancy. And uh, mo and moreover, the pangolins only only give birth to one offspring at a time, uh, and they. Uh, they spend uh, typically six months nurturing their, their offspring, so they don't so they don't have the ability to breed rapidly, and even worse, pang Chinese pangolins don't don't do well in zoos. So, their particular diet and some termites is not is not something that can they can be recreated in, in a zoo environment. You know, we can't we can't produ produce a term termite nests to order and plop and plop them down to a pangolin enclosure so we we would need to keep to feed them on alter, on alternative foods which works for a lot of insectivores but the chinese pangolin just doesn't do well on any diets other than it's a natural and some termites so they, they're very diff they're very difficult to keep in zoos so captive breeding program isn't much of an option, and so if they go extinct in in the wild, they're probably gone for good. We, there's very little we can do to save them. Tra tragic. A species that ought to be surviving very well is likely to go extinct just because of idiots with guns. And of course, there's an another controversial topic involving pangolins. So the COVID virus. <laughs> so <coughs> there is some speculation that pangolins could have been involved with the COVID outbreak. So <coughs> if you recall, the initial outbreak of COVID nineteen was for, was from a meat market in Wuhan, China. So the kind of place where the illegal trade in pangolin meat was probably ongoing. And also, 
there's a very close match between the spike proteins that are stu these characteristic structures that give coronaviruses their name, the, prote the proteins of one of the pangolin coronaviruses, the kind that produces an ordinary disease and that's not very much concerned in pangolins, so the pangolin equivalent of the common cold, that, that virus has a very, very much the same sp structure of spike protein as the human COVID-19 virus. So, that, that link is possibly a smoking gun that pangolins could have been involved in, in this, and the pangolin trade could have been involved in the cause of the coronavirus. However, the story is not quite that simple. <clears throat> and the reason why is because when we, when we take a look at the full genetic scan of, of the coronaviruses, there's not very close match between pangolin coronavirus and COVID-19. Yeah, the match, the, I see a source indicating the match is only 92%, which sounds like a lot to most people, but in genetics, that's, that's nothing. So, just to, so for instance, just about any pair of animals is going to be 80 to 90% identical, just, you know, even a, you know, a, a human and a sponge, because, yeah, just because most of the genes that are, that are in the genetic code of anything are just genes that are necessary for survival, and so, and so they're identical in pretty much everything. So, similarly, any two coronaviruses that are not particularly related are going to have, wait, you know, over, genetic overlaps into, into the 80s, 90s, so 92% identical, although it sounds like a lot, that's the number it means that no, these are not closely related at all, they're completely different viruses. So, Pan so penguin coronavirus might have been involved in somewhat, but humans certainly did not contract it by, by poaching penguins. There, there has to have been a more complicated story, that viruses don't match closely, closely enough for it to have been anything direct. Well, there's what you need, what you need to know about penguins. They're, they're, they're cute species, they're species that should be thriving. That are not because of because of human activity, and they're not, and they're not they're not a threat to humans. They they eat insects. They did not give us COVID. And well, nothing nothing left but to cite my sources, Wikipedia of course, uh, the I, the IUCN a very very important site for information on endangered species in general, and and especially on this one because because penguins are a species of a great concern because, you know, given that they're endangered largely due to hunting, which is something that we ought to be able to stop. And I uh, also went, went into a little academic research. We have an actual journal article here among my sources uh, from, from Zookies and Im images from the, the usual so selection of uh, if, of uh, images avail available through Wikipedia under, under, under share like terms, so this, so this video likewise. And, yep, yeah, that's, that's it for today. I hope, I hope you all have a great year, and I hope that the Pagolins do as well, even if it's not as likely. <laughs> Bye.